The solar de Saptatala, as I said, is um, it's about 500 years old and it has been very much part of Carnatic music. It still continues to be part of Carnatic music. But it might uh, seem a little overly complicated for a musical system. Why do we need so many kinds of talas? You know, uh, why, why should we have gestures? Why these gestures? You know, the question of why only these gestures? Uh, it it is uh, it's, it's a probably a research topic. Why why is it that these gestures have come down? In fact. Um, there is a suggestion in Abhinav Gupta's work that these gestures are possibly derived from the gestures that were used during um, the sacrifices in the, the Samaveda, for instance. Samaveda uh, prescribes hand gestures, specific gestures that are to be used during specific points of time during any sacrifice. So, uh, this beating and counting, beating and throwing your hand aside, why only these, why not something else? Uh, it is, uh, ultimately it is only uh, arbitrary. Um, in fact, uh, in this context I might also mention that these three angas that I spoke about, laghu, that is beating and counting, drutam, beating and throwing your hand aside and anudrutam, which is just beating, these are the three angas that are used in Sula di Sapta Tala. There are other Tala angas which are used in another Tala system which is called the 108 Anga Tala. You, you can, it's, it's almost very rare to find uh, compositions or performances using those Talas among the 108 Talas. Uh, if at all they are performed, it is only for uh, an interest, uh, novelty, a kind of a demonstration, demonstration purposes, but for performances, the 108 talas are not ever used these days. Sula de Sapta talas are still used. The other angas that the 108 uh, tala system uses are called um, Guru, Plutam, and Kakapadam. Uh, Guru has a count of 8. Plutam has a count of 12 and Kakapadam has a count of um, 16. Um, and the, the Tala Kriya, what is done, the gestures, it varies from 4 down, 4 here, 4 there and then up and sometimes they also do this kind of a circular movement. So these are all the Kriyas that are associated with the other talangas, which is not of our concern at all. Um, it's, it was certainly a part of uh, Carnatic music until a couple of centuries ago or even the last century, uh, early parts of 20th century we might have had some uh, active renditions of uh, these talas, but certainly in contemporary Carnatic music uh, these are not actively performed. So, Sula Di Sapsatala, coming back to it, the one reason why we do need to maintain the Tala cycle with this kind of codified gestures is that, as I mentioned earlier, this is the reference for everybody, for the performer, for the singer, if there is a singer, for the accompanist and also for the audience. You need to maintain the Tala cycle. Maintaining the Tala cycle as I said is sacrosanct, it is as important as maintaining the Shruti, maintaining the pitch, pitch fidelity as it is important to maintain the Raga grammar or the composition's integrity. These are all things that are musts in Carnatic music as a classical musical form. These are all things that uh, are inviolable. The Tala cycle is one such thing. If you have a Tala cycle of 6 beats in a composition or 7 beats or 21 beats, that cycle has to be maintained throughout the rendition of that particular piece. And unless we have this performance of the Tala, it is quite um, difficult. Because these cycles are long, 
they are not short ones like 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 or 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. These were short cycles, then it is possible to, uh, you know, to remember it, to, to keep track of it. But when you have longer cycles, it is not easy to keep track of the cycle. Of course, great masters who have been performing for years, for decades, they do get it into their system and they possibly they don't need an external reference to uh, perform. When you think of great instrumentalists who play, in, uh, the, the perform, when you're playing on an instrument, the veena or the violin, your hands are engaged, you can't be, you don't have hands to perform the tara. So great masters, they don't, they didn't need the, uh, an external reference. But uh, anybody at a even a slightly less elevated level, they need the tala performed um, for them to keep track of the tala cycle. So coming back to the Sula Risabda Tala, for us to have 7 into 5 into 5, um, 175 tala. Yes, do we really need so many um, talas? For instance, let me take Dhruva Tala and Atta Tala. Now, Dhruva Tala, both of them are part of the Sula Disapta Tala, if you remember. Dhruva Tala has a structure of 1, 0, 1, 1. That is Laghu, Dhrutam, Laghu, Laghu. Atatala has a structure of 1, 1, 0, 0. Now, suppose this is, we take Chatushra Jati Dhruva Tala, then let us see how many beats are there per, per Avartana. So, this is 4, this is 2, this is again 4 and this is again 4. The Chatushra Jati Dhruva Tala is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 beats, 14 matras. Atatala, let us take Khanda Jati. In fact, by default, all of these Suladi Saptatalas are associated, all, all the Suladi Saptatalas are associated with one or the other Jati by default. So, Dhruvatalam is by default associated with Chatushta Jati. Atatalam by default is associated with the Khanda Jati, that is 5 beats. So, again, Dhruva, uh, if you take Atatala, Khanda Jati Atatala, you have 5, Laghu is 5, another Laghu is 5, Drutam is 2, another Drutam is 2. Again, you have 14 beats. So, what is the point? Why must we have? two different talas when the number of beats is the same, there is a point. If you, we will watch a short demonstration now, again performed at a very beginner's level. As I said, the Suladi Sapta Tala is something that is introduced to beginning, beginners uh, right away in the, in a set of lessons called Alankaras. Now, this Dhruva Tala, the structure of the Tala is like this 1, 0, 1, 1. Atta Tala, the structure is 1, 1, 0, 0. So, the structure is very different. The composition structure will also be, will always also correspond to the structure of this Tala. The, in, the internal structure of the composition will be such that it will reflect this structure. Let us listen, let us watch this clip. Sari ga ma ga di, sari ga di, sari ga ma ri ga ma pa ma ga ri ga ma ga ri ga ma pa 
The next you will demonstrate Atta Thada, which is also of 14 mantras, but the Thada Kriya is very different. The Atta Thada is, the Kriya is like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So Atta Thada is two lagus and two dhritams. Sariga Sariga Mama Riga Ma Riga Ma Papa Gama Pa Gama Pa Da Da Ma Pa Da Ma Pa Da Ni Ni Pa Da Ni Pa Da Ni So as we saw, Dhruva Tada is Laghu followed by Dhruta followed by two Laghu. So, Sarigamagari, Sarigari, Sarigamagari. Whereas, Atta Tada has two, so you see the, the, the Alankara. It is a composition. It's created such that it it fits into the the, the tala anga is reflected in this. It coincides with the tala anga. Sari gama gari, sari gari, sari gama. Let us see how the atta tala alankara is constructed. Again, that will reflect the tala angas. Sari ga sari ga ma ma Now suppose I were to sing this alankara in Dhruva Thadam. This is how the thing is structured. Sari ga sari ga ma ma That is if I were to sing it in Dhruva Thadam. Sari ga sa It is coming in the middle of nowhere. Sari ga sa so, the compositions and the, the, tala, the tala angas, there will be a close connection between these two. Now, if we take a composition, a, a proper uh, composition, this of course is an exercise. What I just, what was just demonstrated is an exercise, uh, and what, what is called Abhyasa Ganam. That is, Abhyasa Ganam is a repertoire that is used only for practice. Now we have the other 
part of Karnatic repertoire which is called Sabhaganam. That is that which is used for performances. Even in compositions in Sabhaganam, because ultimately that is what is relevant, we have uh, compositions which are rendered in one or the other of the Sula and Satya Tala, but the composition's internal structure will reflect the Tala Anga structure. Now, let us take two other similar, two other Talas which have the same number of beats. Matya Tala, Jhampa Tala, Matya Tala is also associated with Chatushra Jati, with Chatushra Matya and Jhampa is always by default associated with Vishnu. Of course, we can have other Jatis also, but by default, unless otherwise mentioned, Matya Tala is Chatushra Jati, Jhampa Tala is Vishnu Jati. Matya Tala has a structure 1, 0, 1. Jhampa has 1. Anudruta and Druta. So Laghu, Druta, Laghu, Laghu, Anudruta, Druta. So Chatushra Matya will have 4 plus 2 plus 4, that is 10. Mishta Jampa will have 7 plus 1 plus 2. as equal to again 10. Now there are two great compositions in these two talas by Muthuswami Dikshidar. It is part of a group of kritis called Navagraha kritis. The Chatushra Jati Matya Tala is a composition in Asaviri Ragam, Chandram Bhajamanasa. The structure of the composition is like this. Matya Tala is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let us see how the structure of the composition coincides with the structure of the Tala. <coughs> of this composition is, is here, you may listen to it and the other composition we have to consider is in Mishra Jampatala and the composition is Buddha Mashrayami and the composition uh, Mishra Jampatala is 1, Mishra is 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is Mishra Jampa Tala and the composition is structured to reflect the Tala Angas. As you can see, hmm. So, 
that is the Mishra Jampatala which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. To wrap up our session on Tala, we have uh, many Thalas in Carnatic music. The most widely used are as I said Adi, Adi Thala of 8 beats, Topaka Thala of 6 beats, Khanta Chapu of 5 beats, Mishra Chapu of 7 beats. The Sula Adi Sapta Thala that we just saw are also used. In fact, Atta Thala uh, has a significant presence in Varnams. Varnam is a kind of composition which we will be seeing soon in our next session or so. Varnam is a compositional type and most Varnams, uh, Varnams are rendered in Adi Thala mostly, but we have a group of uh, Thalas which are rendered in Atta Thala also. So Atta Thala has significant presence in Varnam as a compositional form um, and the Sula and the Sapta Thala have a very significant presence in the, uh, in the, in what is called Ragam Thanam Pallavi. Ragam Thanam Pallavi is a, is a presentational piece, it is a piece that is presented in Carnatic music concerts and uh, the Pallavi which is the compositional aspect of, which is, which is the only composition that is used in RTP, that is RTP is uh, heavy on improvisation, but we have one uh, line of composition and that composition is very often, almost by default, it is cast in one of the Suladi Saptatalas and in some unusual jati and Nadai. We will see more about all about Suladi Saptatala when we talk about Ragam Tanam Pallavi in detail. But in the meantime, even in the um, corpus of Carnatic compositions proper, Suladi Saptatala has a significant presence. So, having covered Raga and Tala, we are now ready to take a look at. Carnatic music as it is performed, as it is heard. When we hear Carnatic music, what is it that we hear? Tala and Raga are underlying principles, but what we hear, the compositions, the improvisation in Carnatic music, that is something we will now talk about in our next sessions. <laughs>